back in Oklahoma for the conclusion of winter and for episode two of the Soul vs. the Hyperlink showdown. Is it any wonder that the state that once had a license plate slogan of this would also produce the OK Kite Order? I mean, just imagine if I would have been born in Utah. Thanks, Mike and Sharon. If you haven't seen episode one, click right here or find the episode in my playlist. So let's get right to it. So the hyperlink took home the points in aesthetics, setup, and control system. That brings the current point total of four to zero in favor of the hyperlink. Now remember, much of this grading system is very subjective and also very specific to my riding ability. In today's episode, let's grade the hyperlink in the sole on launch and land and performance on a hydrofoil and on a twin tip. With launching the kite from land, my experience has been that because of the sole's higher aspect ratio, sometimes the edge of the kite will get folded inside the bridle system. This really isn't too surprising considering how much longer the wingspan is of the sole in relation to the hyperlink. If it's major, that requires you to walk back to your kite, untangle the bridle from the edge of the kite, before going back to launch. If it's a minor issue, I've actually had pretty good success at launching the kite and shaking it out once in the air it flies. Concerning landing, I've had success with a solo land by putting the kite on the edge of the wind window and then hitting your flag outline. Make sure that when you're setting up your kite initially that your flag outline release is to the side of the edge of the wind window that you will be performing the self-land maneuver. Also make sure that your clearance directly downwind is sufficient enough, even if you're landing the kite on the edge of the wind window. These kites reacted pretty comparably in the self-land with the flag out system. In the solo backstall land, I would have to give the edge to the hyperlink simply because it comes with a brake handle within the control system. However, this is honestly not a maneuver that I will regularly perform. Both kites perform well on the water relaunch. Both are able to relaunch with a single line steering relaunch like an LEI, but the sole is extremely efficient in this maneuver. And you'd expect the hyperlink to be the one more efficient because of just the less distance that needs to be traveled on a single line relaunch, but that's simply not the case. The sole is extremely efficient. Trailing edge relaunch on the water, I would say that the kites were comparable. And both kites have a water expel system through their tips. I did have an episode on the water with the sole when I was practicing down loop transitions and I dropped my kite in the water for at least 15 minutes and what I could have only described as twists, folds, bow ties, etc. I thought the fly surfer sole was unmanageable to relaunch from the water. But again, after 15 minutes I was able to relaunch that kite off of the water and this was in deep water. I can't imagine the hyperlink with its more absorbable makeup to be able to perform at this level for this duration on the water as the sole did because the lack of saturation of water in the sole after this period of time was simply remarkable. The deep water self rescue aspect I have not experienced yet but as I mentioned in the last episode I would expect the hyperlink and its single deflate system that's centered on the back of the kite to be more efficient for expelling air in a deep water rescue situation. I would probably have to give the launch and land performance a draw for this category. Nothing substantial stood out to me that separated one kite from the other. It's true that the increased wingspan of the sole does at times require you to untangle bridles around the edges of the kite. Both kites are remarkably efficient at relaunching off of the water, but the sole and its endurance at repelling saturation, I think makes it very special. I still have the most apprehension with the solo land in restricted tight landing spaces, but until some type of anchored controlled self land is developed, this will continue to be the case for me. The sole races to the front edge of the wind window, whereas the hyperlink sits 
deeper in the window. In application for a hydrofoiler of my level, this may seem minimal, but it's actually fairly significant. I'm currently working on jibe transitions on the water with a foot stance change. I'm also very slow on my transitions, not very aggressive with my kite flying, and I'm not consistently down looping on transitions. And I know that the down loop would solve a majority of these issues, but I'm just not there yet. But without down looping the kite, on the sole I am able to follow that kite around the corner on transition, and when reversing direction, I'm able to send the sole through the power zone and continue with my direction change. With the hyperlink sitting further back, deeper in the window, and flying the kite fairly high, the feeling is that when I try a direction change with a jibe, that the kite pulls me back almost the feeling of a 180 degree pull on the foil in the opposite direction. So again, to contrast that with the sole, I feel as if it actually, I can follow it around the corner because it's hitting the power zone as the kite's already in front of me. And I hope you can tell that from this video. This may seem like a minute technical difference, but for me, it's the difference between an 80% success rate in transitions on the sole versus around a 10% success rate on the hyperlink and falling back into the water on most transitions. Again, I understand that the solution is in the down loop transition, which I have had limited time in practicing up to this point. The foil kites obviously move more slowly than the LEIs in the down loop, and I have experienced more success to this point with the sole in my down loop transition than with the hyperlink, which is also a little surprising to me considering that the hyperlink is a faster moving kite than the sole. But I would have to chalk that up to two things. First of all, the increased bar pressure, and secondly, just my overall lack of commitment in the down loop when I'm on my foil. I have foiled with both kites in the seven to nine knot range, and my preference definitely is with the sole. Not to say the hyperlink didn't perform well, it did. I had success hydrofoiling in those conditions on both kites. But what I would say with the sole is that it is extremely stable in these light winds. It almost just sits at its zenith and you don't have to worry about it when you're in the water, when you've fallen off of your hydrofoil and you're trying to get back on your board. This is the biggest difference between the two. And honestly, not that the hyperlink is unstable at all, but really the reason I first started looking at a foil kite was for conditions like this. My priority is to avoid the deep water self-rescue. And the thought of that with a bladderless kite is even less appealing. With both kites, I was actually pretty pleased with their downwind performance. I would have expected the hyperlink to perform better in drift, but the lack of difference between the two kites is probably more of a testament to my kite flying skills with the foil kite and also my current level of hydrofoiling. The performance points on a hydrofoil go to the sole. For its stability in light winds and friendliness for the evolving, timid, scared, weak sauce hydrofoiler. Granted, I can see the more advanced hydrofoiler definitely having a preference in the hyperlink for its increased quickness, playfulness, and downwind drifting performance potential. Let's be honest, if the hydrofoil did not exist, I doubt that the foil kite market would be getting the current traction that it is. But because of the crossover, the range, the compactness of travel with the foil kite, the antennas of the kiteboarding world are being raised. On a twin tip, these kites are very enjoyable. The sole has great upwind riding ability. It is a little slow, but remember this is also a 12 meter version. The hyperlink moves more quickly than the sole. This really came to the surface for me when I was riding in highly congested areas that required quick transitions or maneuvering to get away from traffic. And the sole responded fine in this environment, just not quite as responsive. I was riding with what I would conservatively consider a two meter advantage on other LEI kiters on comparable boards in the very same riding conditions. Both kites, I feel like, handle gusty wind conditions very well. Again, I would probably give the edge to the sole here. This is probably another shape-dependent attribute of the sole. 
For me though, if I'm going to use a foil kite as a crossover, I want to know which kite boosts more easily on a twin tip. The sole for me in 15 mile per hour winds was pretty dummy proof for boosting. Just send the kite overhead and sheet in and it had pretty good lift, not requiring a lot of skill. I attempted that same method with the hyperlink and I was extremely disappointed in the same conditions. I quickly contacted Vadim with Green Hat Kiteboarding to express my frustration with the lack of boost that I had been experiencing with the hyperlink. Following some instruction on sending a kite that sits deeper in the wind window and with some more favorable wind conditions, I did have more success. I am improving with my boosts on the hyperlink, I just think more skill is definitely required. The points on twin tip performance also go to the sole. For me, due to the following reasons. The sole handles gusts better in my opinion. With jumping, it's a simple technique. And even though the hyperlink is more playful and quicker, it's not tube kite more playful and quicker. If I was a more advanced rider, I could definitely see where my twin tip preference would lie with the hyperlink, but not today. At this point in time, and at my current level of ability, I would choose the soul. But if I were, say, the more okayer kite border, or the ute kite border, I could see myself choosing the hyperlink because of its increased speed and playfulness. But still present is the increased skill required in boosting on a twin tip and transitioning on a hydrofoil. The verdict is that you, you can't go wrong with either kite, but my personal conclusion is that the Fly Surfer Soul fills a larger spectrum of ability in the foil kite arena, whereas the Hyperlink shines with the more advanced rider. Reach out to Green Hack Kiteboarding for all your kiteboarding needs. I would like to thank them for taking me on this foil kite journey the last few months. Subscribe, like, and comment, and we'll see you next time. Warmer waters are a coming.